driving through the forest at dusk. There was a side road he hadn't seen before, so he turned down it and drove and drove. The forest is so vast and the road so straight. It felt good. There was a sweet breeze coming through the open window and the music from the car radio soothed his mind along with the scent of pine and the recent rain that infused the air. Daylight had started to fade and on he drove through miles of pines. He thought about his life and as his mind drifted he was almost finding some kind of peace. All his frustrations of his troubled days seemed to fall away. And on he drove, hypnotized by the rhythm of the trees, the dense forest, and the miles of pines. Suddenly, a huge shape leapt from the forest to his right. There was barely enough time to react. He hit the brakes hard, but the car collided with the creature, or whatever it was. It was a sudden and whiplashing halt, then all fell silent. Not another soul on the road, no sound, not even the distant hum of an engine, just the clicking of a blinking indicator. By now the forest was dark and all the stars were out, silhouetting the treetops. After some time sitting frozen at the wheel, he cautiously stepped out. And there he saw the fallen animal in the blinking red light and the white of the headlights surrounded by shattered glass. He saw what he had struck. It lay there still and surely dead. A wild boar it was huge, a wild boar, its tusks shining in the headlights and under the stars. But how could it be? There hadn't been a boar spotted around here for at least 50 years, by all accounts. Pale crimson drops speckled the tarmacadam under its limp and hanging tongue. Its tail was coiled, legs were outstretched and frozen, as if still in mid-run. A night moth had landed on the animal's head and seemed to be drinking a tear from its cheek. The night was cold now, and the man's quickened breath made clouds in the night air. But no such cloud rose from the boar's mouth. The man leaned over and slowly placed his open and trembling hand on the flank of the stricken animal. He felt a surge in his chest, in his loins. 
felt like a hunter for the first time in his life. And then, without hesitation or questioning the strength he had summoned, he grabbed the hind legs and dragged the boar into the back seat of the car. He got behind the wheel, closed the door, and drove away through miles of pine. side store at a crossroads in the forest. You stopped the car and got out. After throwing a blanket over the boar that lay on the back seat, he entered the store with all its fluorescent lights ablaze. As the attendant watched a game show on a tiny TV by the cash register. the store and fishing the keys out of his pocket. He turned the corner to head back to his parked car. But then he stopped, dead in his tracks. The car had been totally destroyed. All the doors were off. The windscreen was smashed out. And as he slowly approached, it was clearer the boar is gone. I must have just stunned it, he thought. He looked into the forest, walked off into the night, miles of pines.